Hey guys, I'm Get to 134 here, bringing you another My Hero Academia review. This time we're looking at Season 3, Episodes 19 and 20. I know I keep doing double episodes lately. I've just gotten really behind. Um, this is probably going to be the last time I do My Hero Academia, like, double together. I'm not, I'm not going to stop doing My Hero Academia. Um, but I am going to try and, <clears throat> you know, not double up so much, but it's just because I've let myself get behind. I had a, a like like I said a, from my last vlog, I had an eight day stretch at work where I was going in every day, and yeah, it was one to ten every night. But like it was it was getting to the point where I just didn't feel like doing a vlog where it would take like twenty to thirty minutes out of my day. But I'm gonna try and stop doing that. Um, as for the last episode of Common Rider Build, that's gonna be coming towards the, the middle of the week, probably Wednesday. Um, I haven't had time to watch it or find a place to watch it yet. Um, I really want to because I'm getting excited for it. I want to have it done this week so that next week when Zio starts, we're going to have a fresh a fresh beginning. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I'm This Commodore train is going to keep rolling. Um, next next uh, next week, we're going to be watching uh, Common Rider. We're going to be watching Common Rider Zio as that's the start the start point for Kamen Rider Zio, and I'm going to try and not do as many doubling ups as I can. Um, you know, that just is going to happen. Um, and probably once the se once My Hero Academia is over for the season, I'm going to take a break from watching two things at once. Um, and nothing against it, I just... I feel like I need to take a break, because as much as I, I've enjoyed doing both My Hero Academia and Kamen Rider uh, build... It was very hard for me to try and get two out at a time, just with the way my schedule is. I'm sorry, and especially because next... Especially because I, I work in retail and we're getting into the holiday season, uh, which is always bad. Uh, all very... It's always pretty rough, especially when we get into December. Uh, I'm gonna give it... I'm gonna give it my best, guys, but I'm not gonna make a lot of promises. Um, so anyway, let's get into the episodes. The first episode is, uh is the beginning of the rescue, uh, the rescue mission, uh, the rescue portion of the hero, the provincial hero license exam, the uh, rescue exam. And we, we get a little bit of world <coughs> building here, particularly with the fact that there are people that, uh, are, are, uh, professional, professional victims, basically. And they're used to basically, uh, teach here, help heroes learn how to, properly rescue people and we get a lot of different scenarios particularly the fact that the city that they're in had been bombed by terror well it's basically a simulation of a terrorist attack where like a villain has bombed the city and so basically the heroes have to go in because the rescue workers can't get in right away they have to make a path and so these heroes all have to go in and rescue people it's interesting to see Particularly in how, like, a lot of the, like, they have to show, like, they have to work, it's basically a way for all of them to work together and to see how, what they should do to be good heroes and, you know, the importance of, you know, rescuing people and keeping them calm and all that. And, you know, how to assess the situation and how best to use your quirk. And particularly, they say, you know, in this in this kind of situation, you should really know how... You know the prop. The best places to a use your quirk. You know how what, how your quirk can be used for rescue missions and how best you can because you know you could go in you can go into a situation where you don't know any of the other heroes. So the best thing you could do is be prepared for rescue training and how to properly utilize your quirk, especially you know if you're not working with people you ever know. And I had to give a credit. I think this is why I actually really like how it shows how. Midoriya is actually kind of prepared for a rescue. And how, you know, this is this is one of the most important things, you know, and how how much this is really the beginning of how of his steps to becoming a good hero is uh being able to rescue people very people. <clears throat> Although I will admit I, I am frustrated how he doesn't he's not completely prepared for it. Like I don't mind him like losing a few points on his first rescue, uh, first rescuee, but like it just kind of frustrated me how he wasn't super prepared for it, especially because that was like the one thing that got him 
wanting to or being like the All Might fanboy that he is, is by seeing uh, that video of All Might rescuing uh, like a hundred people in like the span of like ten minutes. But still, like you know, he he's young and he's learning. I, I will admit that was probably my least favorite part of this arc was just the fact that he he didn't do as good as I had hoped he would at the rescue portion. <clears throat> but it's whatever. And to be fair, he's learning. He'll get better. It's still his first year, technically. So, you know, it's it's mostly me just being like, you know what? No, he's gonna get better. I I I can't I can't give up on my boy. And to be fair, he gets a lot better as the series progresses, from what I know. <clears throat> from later on in the manga. And I, I I know. I haven't seen all... I haven't read all the manga. I'm I'm reading it in trades, and I'd like to... And that's how I want to read it. I'm reading it in Tonkoban. But anyway. And so basically, you know, it, we see everyone's... Uh, we see everyone's uh, training... Uh, rescue parts. And it's pretty much how it goes. Um, you know, you, you've seen it before. And, uh, and of course, the episode ends where... Uh, with the reveal that, you know, after, like, about ten minutes of rescuing, and the fact that, like, nobody's really lost any points, you know, or, like, haven't had that many points deducted, uh, they decide it's time to ratchet things up, and there's more explosions as, basically, you know, as they have to show, like, that sometimes, <clears throat> you know, even in the midst of rescue, villains will still attack, and, um... Especially because, like, apparently, uh, Ida and Midoriya basically state that, like, this, uh, this simulation is most likely based on the final battle between All Might and All for One, and basically their devastation of the Kamino Ward. And so it, it makes sense that they would have a villain attack, and in this case, it's the tenth, the number ten hero, Gang Orca, <clears throat> and his cronies. Yeah, fun fact, those guys that are all with uh, Gang Orca are actually all his sidekicks. Uh, they normally don't wear those outfits. Those are actually outfits they're wearing to make themselves look more like villains. Uh, but the reason they do that is because they're basically, like, they are really loyal to Gang Orca. Hence why he's called Gang Orca. Because he actually has, like, a gang of sidekicks. They all call him, bo like, Boss Fish. And it's, it's amazing. But they use Gang Orca because he's not, well, he's also the number 10 hero... He's also the number three, uh, three hero heroes that look like villains, which I'm curious to see who's the number two and the number one. I'm hoping number one is Endeavor. This <laughs> man, Endeavor, sucks. And yeah, I know something happened to him in the manga, but I, Come on, guys. He deserved a little bit of comeuppance for the way he treated his family. Don't act like he's not late, like he's some sort of saint. <clears throat> <clears throat> you know, I, don't, I, I it's mostly because I don't like I don't like when characters are evil and they don't get really any comeuppance whatsoever for doing terror. Like, and even if he's a hero, and to be fair, like I usually like that because then at least. And that's the beginning of that character becoming the, a, a better person. Or at least showing that they are a better person. But, you know, it's whatever. It might also just be because Todoroki's my favorite character. But well, anyway, getting away from the manga. Getting with the... And to be fair, I, I mostly say that because I know Horikoshi got death threats over it. Like, that ticks me off just because it's like, guys, why you do that? Why did you do that? But again, it's whatever. It's whatever. Getting back to the episode. <clears throat> so yeah, basically, Gang Worker shows up, and it it's gonna be, and it's to show, and it's so that they can see how heroes and heroes react to rescuing people, as well as defending them from a villain attack while they're still in the midst of being rescued. Um, sorry, I shaved, and I'm trying to make sure my mustache looks alright. Yeah, I know, I know, it's important, stash. Stash of Peeps is important, despite how I leave it really bushy. <laughs> anyway, I'm really distracted. But to be fair, the, the episode's more or less just the beginnings of the rescue portion. Um, other noticeable things is they... Is that we actually see Shiketsu High more. Uh, we, see the, we see the really fuzzy guy and how his ability is he can extend his hair and he can use it to um, make, like, paths and stuff. Um... 
we also see uh, that we also see more of the wind dudes uh, um, problems with Todoroki, particularly that ooh, he doesn't care for him or he doesn't care for him or Endeavor. And because they have like the same eyes. Uh, we see more of Uraraka's crush with Midoriya and how she's kind of wanting to kind of bury it inside of herself because she feels that she's letting her crush kind of get in the way of being a hero and how she needs to work better at, so that she can actually be by Midoriya's side, you know, if, you know, and so that she can, they can always be like friends so that they can, so that she, basically she needs to not work through her emotional problems right now. She needs to focus on being a hero so that she can, she can be with Midoriya so that she and him can like, still be at, at each other's side, basically. So, th because they're both trying to work at the same goal, and she's letting herself fall behind. Which I actually like. That, it says, I, I actually like when, like, I, she's probably, it's one of the reasons why is probably one of my favorite female leads in anime currently, and probably in general, just because, like, she's, she's like, you know, I, I've got a crush on Midoriya, but I'm not letting it, overtake what my goal is, and that's to become a hero. You know, like, because, like, that was one of my biggest problems with Sakura, Naruto, and even a little bit with Hinata, because, like, that was kind of the only thing that Hinata had as a character, was that she had a thing for Naruto. And as much as I love Hinata, she's one of my favorite characters from Naruto, it was frustrating. Because <laughs> it's like, stop letting a man shape who you are! You know, like... But, like, that's why I like Uraraka. In fact, like, most of the girls from Class 1A, 1A, or the girls from UA in general, is that they're actually not. In fact, the only one that they do play that up with is more or less... Uh, that's a bad thing, is, like, Toga and Kami. You know, that's... Uh, that's more or less the... You know, how... That's wrong. But, yeah, in general, I... I, uh, I think that's really the major points of the, art, the episode. Uh, you get a really great Bakugo moment where he tells... Tells the victims to save themselves. <laughs> and the victims think he's like... He noticed that they were only... You know, they only had mild injuries like scratches. And they were a little bit cut up or bruised up. But like they could still move. So they should go on while they look for more... For more... Injured... For the for the much more injured people that can't move and such. Um, but you know... In general, I think it's a. I think it was a pretty good episode. Um, I will admit, if you're if you if you have any problems with it, you're probably gonna have problems with the fact that the the rescue victims seem to be really uppity about, you know, them not doing stuff right. But to be fair, like they're it's their job to make sure these heroes are ready so they don't end up hurting someone or making the situation worse during a disaster. And I and you know I I can respect that. It's rough, but you know it's what it is. Um, but yeah, in general, I, I like the episode. It's kind of, it's kind of just set up for the next, for the next, ep, for the, like, the next part of the two, the two-parter, um, where most of the, most of the story is going to go, especially the, the stuff between, uh, Yor Yorashi, the wind guy, and Todoroki, and basically setting up the fight. Or you know, gang orca coming in and fighting fighting against everyone. Um, however, and this is gonna be however, that's not happening next episode. You notice I said it was a two like the next part of the two parter. That's because <clears throat> episode twenty is not the continuation of the of the rescue arc, the rescue the rescue exam arc. Nope, <laughs> because in between. 19 and 21, episode 20 is filler. And not just regular filler. It's a tie-in to the movie. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Episode 20 does not have the, be have the next portion of the rescue exam arc. Episode 20 is what happened before the events of the movie My Hero Academia, Two Heroes. Yep. <laughs> So this episode actually is basically filler. Like, this never happened in the manga. 
There's no chapters. It's literally an episode happening in between the final exam arc and the summer arc. Which, to be fair, there's. I thought it was only supposed to be like maybe like a day. <sighs> few days top since the only other episode that was filler was once again the episode one of season three where they were at the pool yeah this season has a lot more filler than the previous two seasons and it's mostly because of the fact that the a the material they have for the for them from this part of the manga is kind of short and i'm not saying that is a bad thing I, I i'm just saying they clearly want to end the arc at a certain point instead of the next because i think like they're gonna end like it like from the like it's gonna end at the first half of season or of volume 14 maybe even not that maybe like a chapter but yeah more or less i think i have a pretty good idea of where they're gonna stop they're gonna stop the season so anyway so yeah this takes place in between the beginning of <clears throat> or the final exam and the beginning of season three, like before they go to the training camp. Basically, um, All Might's coming in, and the rest of the rest of the teachers of One A, particularly Aizawa, Samentos, uh, President Mike, and All Might, are going to have a simulation train, uh, simulation special class, uh before the camp starts and more or less it's just like a little training simulator basically just to keep their minds fresh before they go uh to camp and just to get, do some training scenarios that they can do to keep them you know basically summer for ua students isn't like there's no homework and they do get to have a little bit of time off but more or less it's still they're they're still training they can't they can't really take time off to train to be become the next the next generation of heroes at ua which is cool um, and more or less, I think it's more supposed to be like, it's not, it's like, hey, it's like, it's like, it's not like summer school per se, but it's more like, hey, like, you know how like sometimes maybe your, maybe your schools during the summer have like little like things with like, hey, you want to come in, the library's open, you can do some reading and, or you can like see what's going to be the next semester, the next, the next year of school for you guys sort of thing. But basically this, um... Before they go into the training arc uh, or the training simulation, they show um, they were they uh, present or uh, uh, <clears throat> midnight and Cementos are watching a news special about All Might's time overseas, and basically it's a way to show clips of the movie because you see All Might with his you see All Might with his actual eyes, like you know he actually has like actual pupils and like irises and like like corneas. Like, instead of the sunken in all black with some blue eyes that All Might has currently. Um, <clears throat> and basically, it's just a way to talk about how, like, his 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 sidekick Dave from that time has become a scientist uh, and is working on the scientist, uh, scientist city um, where basically scientists work together to create gadgets and suits for the heroes of today, I Island. <clears throat> Which is apparently an artificial island that they made or something like that. Which is cool. <clears throat> but anyway, eventually, like, they stop because it's time for the simulation to begin. Um, All Might actually misses the email, which he sees at the end that's basically an, a letter from Dave's daughter. I think her name is Melissa? I forget exactly what her name is. Melissa asking her to, you know, come to I Island and, you know, because we're having, like, a festival or something on the island. More or less, it's an explanation of why All Might and Midoriya are going to I Island. <clears throat> so, um, basically, the the simulation is the kids are supposed to like <clears throat> stop a bank robbery, but when they once they do, mostly because Baka goes imp impatient and an idiot, he storms in. In the confusion of the of the rescue the villain is stabbed to death. The villain, of course, being played by All Might, and which is awesome because All Might is in his, the villain outfit he wore from the first all, uh, My Hero Academia OVA from the anime Festa, Festa stuff, which is hilarious because 
I have a theory that that's actually All Might's All Might's Dark Age '90s costume. That you know, All Might's been alive so long that like in the '90s that was his extreme outfit that made him look all all anti-hero and angsty. Like I, that's what that's what I I, I always want to say that that's not really a villain outfit that All Might is wearing. That he's literally wearing that because that was what he wore during his '90s grunge, like like angry period. Like how in like the nineties, Batman had that stupid armor, or Superman wore the all black suit and the mullet. <clears throat> like that is my belief. That is my belief. Dang it! Oh, hey, you can see my uh, my Transformer and Common Rider stuff in the background there. Yeah, there's uh, Bruticus, the one bad Bruticus. There's uh, the Ninja Mega Falcon, the Ninja Falcon Megazord. Uh, there's uh, there's Power Master Optimus. Anyway, getting back from my. My, my nerdy my nerdy shelf of that is way too full <clears throat> all right so anyway basically they um the training is that they actually have to solve who killed the villain in the in the commotion <clears throat> and what went down and basically it more or less devolves into them trying to solve which of the victims is the killer which eventually leads to Midori actually using his detective skills to try and figure out what happened. So, you know, they basically, you know, they ask each of them what happened. My favorite being present Mike because he overacts. <laughs> like, he basically is a terrible actor, so he just overacts and constantly, you know, like, says, like, yo, and, like, sings his lines. And it's really funny just because he's trying to be, like, he's trying to act and he just overdoes it. <clears throat> but basically, Midori realizes that, like, you know, like, why would the dude kill himself if he's just trying, if, you know, he, he, you know, if he had the money and, you know, was willing to run. And more or less, it's because <clears throat> it turns out that the villain and Midnight's character were lovers, and he didn't want them finding that, that out, so he decided to take his own life so that he wouldn't, they wouldn't have to figure that out. And he goes like, all Might actually opens the episode. Him and Midoriya are in, like, yellow t-shirts. Let's say All Might because they, they're they promoting the movie. And, like, they stop and, like, All Might's like, this is a tale about love. And technically that's the, ta like, that's the love even though it's all fake. Um. And so, uh, more or less, uh, they figure it out. But then I was like, nah, you guys still didn't get the points. Because it turns out, like, uh, Sue is with them, and she uses her hair to tickle his nose to see, like, if, like, he'll nudge, and he starts laughing. And so, more or less, Sue's like, okay, this is just, this is a simulation, so it, he, All Might's not really dead. So we have to basically, uh, basically the actual training of this episode, of this art, of this mission is to do that. It turns out that wasn't just All Might being, like, like, not being able to act. That was actually to prove that, all, like, the killer actually wasn't dead. He faked his death so that... He could use Midnight's uh, love of him to escape. <laughs> Which is hilarious, because you see All Might, like, booking it while he's covered in fake blood going, ah! <laughs> Like, it's it's amazing, and it made me laugh so hard. It's so funny. Like, it was really, really funny. And so, it actually makes it at the end when All Might's like, we saved the day with love, and All Might's like, and Midoriya's like, well, technically, the love wasn't real, but okay. <laughs> and in summary, it was just really, really funny. Um, but yeah, no. Um, but yeah, it was actually really funny, and I, I, I really liked it. And of course, the episode ends where, like, All Might reads the email, and he decides to take Midoriya with him. Literally, like, the day of. Like, it's like, it's almost nighttime, and literally, like, they have to leave, like, right there. <laughs> And I'm like, what? You're telling me he didn't, like, le legitimately, like, Midoriya had to rush and pack a suitcase and leave, like, that night? Like, he had, like, beg his mom permission the night of? Are you kidding me? I thought the whole thing was, like, a field trip. Nope. All Might's like, you gotta go with me. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I know, because, you know, I'm sure most parents would be like, Oh, sure, honey, you can go on this impromptu field trip with your teacher. Like, it's going to just be you and the teacher. What? <laughs> but, you know, it's whatever. It's whatever. Um, 
in general, I thought it was a good episode. It's filler, but it's at least kind of fun and silly. Um, and it really, it almost feels like one of the OVAs they, they did. Except they only have, like, Midoriya, Ida, Uraraka, Siu, Todoroki, and Bakugo instead of, like, the entirety of Class 1A. Um, but, you yeah, know, I thought it was pretty good. In, in summary, I think both episodes are pretty good. I, I will admit, if you want to skip episode 20 and just go straight to the, uh, straight to, like, the next episode, I understand. However, if you want to kind of see, like, set up for why, why they go to I Island and what the movie's about, it's not a bad little, little story arc. Um, but yeah, I think in general, I think these two were good episodes, but I get why if you want to skip episode 20, you would. I thought it was pretty good, though. It has some fun moments. There's some really cute moments with for uh, for Uderaka where like she has to be the one to like scout the building, so like she uses her gravity powers to get onto the awning above to see like what's going on. And I, I, I don't know, it's really cute because like she's basically being trying to be all stealthy, so she like holds her breath as she floats, <laughs> which I thought was really funny. It was really cute. She's just like she like curls herself up to a ball to like make herself like as small as possible to make it harder to see her, and she like. It was really funny, and I love I love stealth stealth. Whenever Uraraka does stealth and gravity and stuff, it was really funny. But uh, anyway, guys, I think that's gonna be it for this. Uh, I look forward to talking about the next episode where it's actually not filler, and you know, look forward to me finally putting an end to Common Rider build, and uh, maybe getting my overall thoughts in an extra video about the series. But uh, in general, guys, that's gonna be it for now. Um, I hope you enjoy, and, you know, always, you know, like, comment, subscribe. Till then, guys, I'm Zongitsu134. Take care.